buttons are bloody gap. Well, today guys and girls, we are going to work on this tree or bonsai and hopefully make it look more like a tree. So, you know, as you know, most of you will know the basic shape of a bonsai is a trunk and a big crown of green on top. Okay, there is some reasonable branching inside, but it's hidden until the winter silhouette comes out. So, I want to make it look more like a tree. A couple of things too. If it's a really old, developed bonsai, it's very hard to change it to make it look like a tree. This is relatively young in its bonsai journey. Um, what else should I say about it? it um, so yeah, it's reasonably young in its bonsai journey. The branches are still soft enough that we can bend them where we want. And also, I guess you could say that the tree is not, you know, that great a stock yet. So if I completely change it and redesign it and make it look like a piece of poop, I suppose it don't matter. It doesn't matter at all. Um, one thing I will say too though is the really cool bonsai shape, right? Definitely have some in your trees. Don't try and make them all look like a tree. Have some bonsai as well. And most people do, they have a bit of both. But I will say in winter silhouette, your shape like this actually looks really cool without the leaves on it, it looks super cool. So keep that in mind, you know, if you want to show it in winter or you want it to look really good in winter without the leaves, by all means, then you can see the whole structure on the inside. You can see all the ramification or the branch divisions and then go for it, you know? Make your bonsai look like a bonsai in summer and in winter, you'll be able to see all the definition, all the branches, twigginess and all that sort of stuff. I really do like this tree. It's Chinese elm, by the way, if you haven't realized yet, Chinese elm. These were branches to let grow fatter. Who knows, we'll have to get in there and sort it out. But today, this tree, I'm sick of having so many that just are a ball of canopy. And let's think about it, an old tree, if you think about an old tree, what do you get? One, a lot of negative space. There is not much leaf to the size of the tree and that negative space brings branching so you can see all the branching even when it's in the leaf in summer in an old tree you can see all the branching with foliage canopies around the place um, I'm going to make this probably a little bit like my Mallee style probably so a Chinese elm in the Mallee style but if you want a tree to look old, especially in summer, I think a great way to do it is a few canopies and lots and lots of negative space. A lot of us are scared to get rid of leaf and branches. And although I do believe you need to have lots of branches on your tree, I think the branches that you have on the tree all need to finish in the same canopy or two or three canopies. So you can have a canopy down lower, another one mid, another one high, where that high one's skinnier and the bottom one's fatter or whatever, but you should have a few canopies. And I'm not saying horizontal branches straight out either, because to me that looks stupid as well not horizontal branches straight out, I mean straight up branches where you have these, I guess, parachute cords of twigginess going up to foliage pads at the top. 
So they're not straight out, they're all upright with different canopy layers, two or three canopy layers and a lot of negative space where you can see all the twigginess, all the branching, even in spring. What that looks like in winter, uh, who knows? I guess we'll find out. But for this tree today, we're going to hit it pretty hard, cut a lot of branches off, try and wire some of these sideways branches back up, which is completely contradictive to what most people teach you wire them down, we're going to wire them back up, or at least guide wire them back up. Very windy, so I've got a door banging over there, I'm going to put something heavier in front of it so it doesn't annoy us. Let's get to it. But first I'll give you a close up of this tree, just to show you that this tree is actually pretty good. Okay, it's actually a pretty good tree with pretty good shape, not bad at all. We're going to try and go for a different style today. Good or bad, we're going to give it a go. Because they've got plenty of trees like this with a green helmet. You know, they call it the green helmet. I've got plenty like that. And today is about trying to do something different. Now let's fix that banging door. Okay, guys. Well... What are we going to do? We're going to just try and make things more and more upright. So if anything's hanging down, we're going to try and push it up into the canopy. And if it's too short to go in the canopy, I'm just going to cut it off. So this one here to the side here is coming off straight away. Gone. These little twiggy ones are going to come off. Maybe leave some of that there and to be honest I'm not sure how I'm going to make this turn out we're just going to wing it see what happens but basically things have got to be brought up right got a lot of scale here which has died which is great just the old shells all dead just oh, 50, 100 scale all dead Maybe even 300. Okay, so we're just going to bring everything up right. Just getting rid of some of this old scale. Okay. Everything's got to be wired up right or pulled up right. It's become part of a believable upright tree. So let's do that. How am I going to do it? I don't know. No idea. We're going to create different layers. I guess basically, probably create a whole layer up here, similar height, and just cut it all like I do with the Mally style. Seems pretty simple and it pretty well is pretty simple. But I guess what will be harder is to try and make it stay up there because I've actually stretched it pretty far. Get rid of these these wispy little ones are gonna have to go. Okay, I don't wanna don't wanna be playing around with little wispy ones. Might actually get rid of the whole one. Okay, so that's that one there, sort of trimmed up to there. So it's going to have to become upright. This one here, I don't even like that one. It's coming too much out the side, so I'm going to get my other snips and just trim it off. Remember, I said an old tree has less branching, you don't have a branch from everywhere, so let's get rid of that one, gone, one on the inside here, gone, little one, little wispy one there, gone, here you've got some crazy branch from the inside in here, let's get rid of that, 
and you got one that's down which is not upright at all just get rid of it chop it off anything down or even horizontal that's you know helping fill in the tree and creating too much full space I'm getting rid of can that be brought around and going up to a different layer I think it probably can or does it take away no I think it can I think I can bring that up to there so we'll leave that branch let's get rid of some wispy stuff in there Okay. So that can go up. Okay, what have we got here? So you can probably go up to the similar height of that one. Alright, so say if we have these two sort of coming up together. Yeah, sort of Mali style, I suppose. It's just. Pull them together like you're giving them both a crew cut, same as we did here, just pull it all together, give it a cut. A very simple way of doing it. This is a method that I've just sort of come up with from Mali style, and it makes trimming a tree super simple, super easy, not complicated, anyone can do it, and I feel like the result. Of what's left over is quite natural looking so you know whether you agree or not I guess is up to you but I feel like it is right, we've got a really heavy okay really heavy branch here that's heading out sideways that I can't bend up let's get rid of it don't need it Big branch gone. I could make some cuttings, but I did make some cuttings earlier, and I've got, you know, probably 20 or 30 cuttings of Chinese elm going now. So, no cuttings. There's that one, I think. I'm just making decisions on the fly here. If I haven't studied anything. It could, this tree could turn out to be a real lemon after I'm finished. Um, if it does, well, so be it. At least I tried to do something different than the old orthodox bonsai style. I'm just trying to make more negative space really is probably the main thing more negative space and also more upright branching if we can so here see if you guys can see it so we're being pretty brutal we're getting to it pretty pretty quick oh Sorry guys, I'm trying to wind you up and I'm fumbling around a bit here. Okay, can you guys see there's a branch back here? Straight out, pretty tough fat branch. There's a nice upright one behind it there. Let's try and move. There's a nice upright one there, it's in the dark a little bit. This one here is a fat one out straight out to the side. And these ones here we can move up. So this fat one, yeah we could move it up but you've got this one here next to it. So let's get rid of that one. Like a sum, going pretty hard on it. I guess you could say being a bit ruthless. But... Put you guys back down. I want to create a lot of negative space. I don't want 
a green helmet on top. Sick of looking at green helmets. They all, they don't all look, I'm sorry, they don't all look the same because people have their helmets in different spots, whatever. But generally a bonsai looks like a bonsai, if you know what I mean. So in this occasion, here we are thinning it out, getting rid of branches we don't need. Here's another branch at the back here. Quite a big branch, but we're going to clear it out. More negative space. This guy at the back here. I don't know if you guys can see it, but back here we've got big, some branches coming up here that we can push up. And this one down below, I guess we could, we could maybe push that up and cut this sideways one off. Because that's competing too much with this one here, which is already in a good position. So now we can have another one going up, so that's good. I hope you guys can see already, it's thinning the tree out a lot. Before you could not even see through it. So yeah, just when you when you decide on the layer that you want to keep, just pull all them branches together and chop them at that layer. This is this is actually root scissors because a lot of your branches in here are too fat for the normal clippers. We'll hit it hard, hit it back hard, let it grow out at the top. Clean it up later. Right, now you can see we got this branch here. Interesting. So you can start to see all of this now. So let's just trim the top here back a bit harder. Like I say, it's a bit of a bowl cut at the hairdresser. You just grab a big clump. And you can see how fast this is. You guys have been live for the whole thing. Super, super easy. Grab a big clump. At where you want it to stop, lift it up, lift it all up in a big clump, chop off anything that's out above your fingers and watch your fingers because I have cut myself before doing it like this, especially when you cut the back, you cut into your fingers, so just be careful. Most of you guys out there are pretty careful, more careful than me. Right, grab another clump, let's push it into a big clump. Like I say, this, this method is super easy. You can get the branches to really get a lot of negative space without much effort. As you can see, you just grab it, okay? So I want that to finish with the top of this tree, so uh, top of these other branches. So what I do is I just grab it like that. Let's hope I'm still in focus. Still going good there, yep. And just chop off anything that's hanging above. I do it in a little bit of a rounded way, I suppose you could say. Rounded way, I suppose you could say. And then we just uh, just chop along. There will be a lot of wiring in a minute, and after the wiring is done, we can probably focus a little bit more on just cleaning it up a bit. Because we've got to wire stuff up in the air. But, another thing we've got too, is we've got these two big branches at the back, sacrificial branches. I'm actually thinking they could, be, they could become a pretty cool separate apex right over here. So let's 
Let's do it up there and see what it looks like. Ah. Pretty hard to get through. There were some pretty big twigs there. Okay, and see some of these lower ones, I want them to grow up into this to create more branching. And that looks completely ridiculous now, and I'm sure I'll get comments and cut those two off. But I tell you what, in time, when these branches on the side here fill in, get up to the top, and we have an actual a thick canopy like here and here, up the top here, it will actually start to look pretty cool and you know it won't be worth cutting off so I guess when you do this Mallee style let a couple extra branches fat ones cruise up over the top and create your last little canopy and then we just got to clean it up I wire it first and then We'll go along and just clean up some stray little branches just to make it look a bit better. I know it's still in the nursery pot, this tree's in very early stages, or was in very early stages as a bonsai, but now it's become gonna become a Mallee tree style, not a bonsai. Obviously it's still a bonsai because it's a small tree, but it's gonna be made to look more like a tree. And I know some people don't like this wire section here. Not going to be a fan of it, but that's just bad luck. If you don't like it, that's your problem. What you got to think of is if you got a saw and cut that off, would that add to the tree by taking it off, or or will it take away from the tree? My 100% belief is it would definitely take away from the tree to get rid of that. Which means you leave it on. So when, when making choices of branches, whatever, just think, does it add to the tree? Does it take from the tree? If you think it adds to the tree, leave it. If it takes from the tree, take, then get rid of it. Take it away. There's some actual really cool things going on in this tree. There's a uh, wasp nest in here. Since uh, I haven't been using any pesticides to control things like scarlet and all that, um, we're actually getting some pretty good little wasp nests and stuff. So that's pretty cool to see. The last little trim there and now we're going to pull some branches upright probably with some guide wires I would say just to really show you the branches all the way up we want to show the branches all the way up this tree okay branches all the way up don't want to see this little guy here And hopefully we can bring up something good. This one here can go. Don't like that guy. Let's bring it all up. Probably get rid of this one here. Yeah, that's pretty good. And once we've wired, guide wired it up, we'll uh, sort out what we're going to do with the rest of it. So, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it up. Okay, guys. Let's get to pulling some of these limbs up. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to kit a, kit a bit of wire, cut a bit of wire. Put a bit of uh, cord on it. Uh, when I say cord, it's like uh, fish bubbler cord or um, air tube to give them oxygen. Something like that. Anything to protect the trunk. Anything you can find. A bit of rubber would be fine too. 
go. And then we need another bit for the main trunk. And this, like I said, this is going to have a lot of guide wires on it, this tree for now. Just trying to bring stuff up, but by next spring. So here we are in mid, or yeah, almost mid-summer. Um, by spring, we're going to be, uh, you know, next year taking off these wires again. And all these branches should pretty well hold where they are. Don't really have too many doubts about that. So basically the only thing we're trying to do is to go upright with the branches. Try and pull them into a position that helps to fill in an area. We're not filling in the areas, remember, in between the uh, canopy layers, but we are filling in areas in the canopy layer to make that canopy layer look a little bit more full, but so that you can still see the branching underneath. So that's the Mali style. So it's interesting here, quite interesting for me to try and make a Chinese elm in the Mali style. Because so far I've only done a Malaluka and a bottle brush in this style. And here we are trying a Chinese elm. And the reason I've tried a Chinese elm because I think they're pretty well suited to it. I thought about an olive, but I'm sure you could do one with an olive. You can do anything you want, really, but I feel like it would be a bit harder, a little bit harder with, a, with an olive. So here we are with a Chinese elm, trying to do it in the Mali style, or basically turn it into a tree, what I think of as a tree. You guys might have, depending on where you are in the world, you might have different interpretations of what a tree is. Okay, so if you've been looking at pines all your life, you might think of a pine as just a bare trunk with a bit of foliage up top. And that could be your thought in your head of a tree, which is fine because trees vary so much. But because I live in Australia, my thought of a tree is quite upright with a few different canopy layers. So that would be the aim of today. Thankfully, most of these top ones are already pretty good. Don't need anything done. That one could probably go up a bit, so let's move that one. So yeah, my thought of an older tree is something that looks like an old gum tree or a mallee tree in Australia. And that's why I'm doing these separate layers. If your, you know, not idea, but your, your thoughts of a tree, I guess idea, but is something different. What you actually like is something different to what I'm doing. Fine. But at the end of the day, you still have to create a lot of this negative spray, uh, spray, space. So like I say, You can have a lot of canopy, fine. And you can have a green helmet, fine. Looks great in, like I say, looks great in, did I grab the wrong one then? Yes, I did. Uh, yeah, you can have a, Full canopy on your deciduous tree. Okay, looks great in winter, but not so great in summer when you're in full leaf. And alternatively, people have a full green helmet on their pines. Okay, and it doesn't do anything to help the pine look older. The actual fact, it makes it look younger, and you end up with a young looking pine even though the trunk might be full of dead wood and all that stuff basically you're aiming to have a lot of negative space 
a lot of negative space and you're also aiming to have maybe a few layers of foliage but at the very least so you can see all the branch structure the trunk structure all the way up I think one guy that really does understand and master that is um, I think it's a guy in America called could be wrong Dan Robinson he's always about cutting a lot of stuff off to create massive amounts of negative space and there's also a guy in America who um, loves negative space and thinks that most people in bonsai leave too much foliage on their tree and that's um, Oh, what's his name? Colin Lewis. So check out Colin Lewis as well. Dan Robinson. Dan Robinson is the king of creating something really, really natural. In actual fact, I think he even has a few of his trees that he's pretty well never wired or touched. He's collected them from the wild and he likes them that much that he hasn't even bothered changing anything on them at all. But anyway, I could be wrong, so check it out. Apologise if I'm wrong, but anyway, what I'm saying is negative space. You want to see the branch structure. And that's about it. So here we are, just uh, bending up some more branches. Trying to bend them all upright all the really lower ones bending upright I didn't want to cut all of these low ones off because I would have ended up with nothing left but I did cut the more severe low ones off because I didn't want the you know the really severe low ones to be having to bend that far because that's one they may not have bent that far and two I feel like there was enough branches not to have to So, what's left here and what's hanging down too far, we're going to change. But thankfully, a lot of it is actually already quite upright at the top there. We don't have to change too much at all. So, bloody beauty, bloody beauty. So, I'm not sure if you guys like this new style that I'm playing with. I mean, if you're a long time watcher of my channel, you'll probably notice over the last year or so that I've been hinting at changing to this sort of style in a lot of my bonsai. Trying to make them look more like a natural tree that I'd see out in the bush. And bush in Australia means you know, some natural, natural growth places, not something in between a woman's legs. Although it does mean that too. But see that, we're pulling it all up, all upright. You can probably leave that one sort of where it is. And all this old scale has just fallen off. It's died in the heat, I guess. Did I spray this tree? I can't remember whether I did. I'm actually going to bring them down a bit. And I'll tell you why. Because I want the level of that one to be close to that one. So let's undo this guide wire a little bit. Guide wire is also really super easy way of moving branches around to where you want them without having to wire out the whole tree. It's a super, super fast way of doing it. So I'm a really big fan of guide wires. Um, wiring out the whole tree I have done and I probably will do again. Okay. It's not something that I despise on. Wiring out the whole tree can be necessary on some trees. 
generally I wire out the primary branches. But guide wires to me do a great job without yeah, they do a great job without having to put all that effort in um, of trying to get in there and wire every little branch. And with these leaves, it's very, very hard to wire it all out. You would probably nearly need to do it in winter. So this is a great way of doing it in summer, guide-wise. And it to me it looks a little bit more natural if you just do a guide wire on the main part of the branch and just let everything else sort of fall into place. So if you individually wire every single twig out, it's a little bit less natural and more contrived I think. But don't get me wrong, primary sometimes in primary structure of your tree you might need to do that but for me right now no so always remember the fish tube or the bubble tube air tube whatever you want to call it to protect the trunk Thankfully, when I set this tree up, <coughs> I had the, uh, I already had partly an idea that I wanted to be more upright in how I wanted my bonsai style when I started on this tree. Originally, I didn't. Originally, all my bonsais were straight out branches, straight out, straight out, straight out, if not even down a bit. But because this one was a little bit into my sort of learning and bonsai it um had a tendency to be already a little bit upright which means i've had to wire way less branches okay where or not we finish is the question do we want that one pulled out to the side more i think we do we rip that one out here to there. It's a good idea. All right, let's do that. So we're still, as you can see here, like I said before, we're still filling in spaces. So here's a really big void of nothing. We're still filling in spaces by pulling that one across to here. And then you have the depth in the foliage there. But in between where that pad's going to finish and the next one and the next lot of foliage in the tree there's going to be a lot of negative space but with branch structure so i guess that's the main thing a lot of negative space showing branch structure makes your tree look really really old and really really cool so just keep that in mind you want your tree to look old don't let it get bushy because what it is basically if you're trimming the whole tree like this one started out as into a big bush I'm not saying you may as well do topiary but you may as well do topiary because it gives you that sort of look and effect yes it looks pretty cool in winter for sure when you can see all the branch divisions everywhere but for the most part in summer it looks like a topiary cut hedge okay so without being too rude towards people um, that are up for that sort of image because some people only like to show in winter there are also people that do like the look of the topiary hedge even in summer and I used to be one of those, and now I am not. I'm starting to look upon some of my own bonsai with disgust and wanting, wanting to change them more into a tree. So I know I'm getting a bit weird and a bit loopy lately, 
with my uh, bonsai. But partly the reason I haven't been working on them much lately is one, I've been busy and it's Christmas and all that. And two, I lost interest in where I was going with them, the shape I was going with. So I wouldn't mind another canopy layer up here, heading out here. So we might even pull that one out here, that one there, and then have another separate layer here. So let's do that. Yeah, I was a little bit bored with how I was going. They all, I love bonsai and I love working on them, but all my trees were starting to look the same, you know, green helmet. And working on one was like as if I just worked on the last one. So now, with this whole new, trying to do this whole new Mali style or natural tree style, um, I'm trying to make it look more like a tree. And I have to be careful saying that because a lot of people in the past have said they want to make their bonsai look more like a tree, John Narka and stuff, and quite often they end up with something that still looks like a bonsai. So I really want to try and make it look like a tree. And if you really want to have something that looks like a tree, and you want some inspiration, don't look at me because I'm hopeless at it, I'm just learning and experimenting with this whole new thing. If you really want to have a look, have a look at Penjing in China, because Penjing in China have been doing it in a very natural way for a very long time. Way ahead of the curve. Do a great job. So, if you really want to have a look, look at theirs. Right, we're just going to pull, just very carefully, pull these down a bit. I know you have some people tell me I'm not allowed to cut wire with my scissors, but I do, and I'll sharpen them again later. It's all good. Right, so all we've done there is accomplished is pulling them out a bit more. So then this will create a pad up the top here. Could possibly, okay, possibly shorten this a bit here. The zip there to create this pad up here. Let all of this stuff below grow up into there. Okay, and then we have another separate pad up the top here, which can then be allowed to cover over this top here even a little bit so let's do that I actually think whoops I've pulled it a little bit far there just sort of a happy medium would be nice Alright, so it's about there, another bit there. This here will be allowed to grow out more here. Okay, so pretty happy with that. This branch here I'm not happy with, let's get rid of that. Right, so now that we've got the main structure laid, let's just go along and chop some of these layers that we want. Okay, it's a layer there, I'll follow that same layer through over here, with the back. 
again on the other side. Let's continue that layer through. Oops, there's a wasp nest there. I don't want to go too hard on that one. We'll leave that there. I'm not worried about the wasps. I just don't want to hurt them because they kill a lot of the bad insects on your trees. We've got that. Oh, what else we got here? Let's chop that off. Created a little bit more division. Whoops. Chopped a branch I wanted to keep off. Not a big deal, but have to let it regrow now. Okay. Alright, now I want a separate canopy layer maybe here. Probably going for three or four canopy layers here. Come across here, find the same layer. This one back here, same thing. You'll be making some hard chops in some areas. That's fine. It'll regrow, it's Chinese elm. You'll back bud like mad. So we're making some hard chops in some areas. Okay. Now we want this sort of, I guess, area to look pretty similar all the way across the top of the tree. Could we make another separate tiny layer there? I don't know. The thing is, if we don't, we'd have to tilt the tree a bit. So it's all even. But then it's too straight on the trunk. So, otherwise we have to cut it really, really hard across here to create a separate layer which for now will be quite harsh, but in the long run will be better. Let's do it. So we're chopping off big bits here, big bits of canopy. As you can see, big bits gone. But I think for the greater good of the tree, in the long run, Another whole canopy height. Just any leaves in between the two canopy heights, get rid of any tiny little branches. Get rid of as long as you don't want the tiny little branches to grow up into the main canopy because you might not have enough branches in here when you do this. And then you'll want some more little ones to grow up into the next height of canopy. So always keep that in mind too. If you think you've got enough branches, just cut everything back. Get rid of all your little branches underneath. And whatever. Oh, I really want to get rid of this one. I'm going to get rid of this big fat one. Or maybe I'll shorten it so it divides. Okay. I know it sort of looks a bit crude. This whole haircut right now. And I actually now think should that finish there or should it finish here? I think here. So what I might do is I might cut that. So the height of this next lot of canopy be a bit lower than I thought, which is fine means I have to change my little guide wire here. Okay, and chop 
this here. And then let that grow up into another height. Right, pretty happy with that. In time it'll make more sense. I certainly think that it looks more like a tree now than it did before. Before I'm sure that it looked like a, you know, nice green helmet. And I'm sure now it's starting to look more like a tree. I will show you what I have cut off. Some of the big branches, I'll show you some of the big ones. Okay. So these are some of the big branches that got cut off. Some of your big ones. And hopefully now it's starting to look more like a some sort of a weird tree. think that was sort of the front there but that could change in time too okay so we could end up getting rid of this one all together and have this as a front but that does hide this big weird looking branch at the back with three out the same area so Probably not going to happen, but for now, that's the tree. More of an upright. Like I say, eventually I want. I will actually do that now too, because I don't like that. I don't like how that looks. What I'll do is I'll poke a hole through the pot here. Hope you guys can see that. Nope, you can't. So I'm poking a hole with this pair of roots in the pot. Cut a bit more air tube and they'll find some. There we go. More of that. And I want this to be around more to the front. In fact, I feel like that's not going to bring it enough. I'm going to go further around. We're going to go further around. Where you do your hole in the pot directly changes where the branch moves to. see we've got our canopy height there another one there including the back one and then another one there and then finally we're going to have a slightly taller one up here and I know the, front, the trunk comes towards you goes away but then back towards you but the overall lean is towards you I don't feel like the tree has much to give if you looked at it this way where it goes away and comes back I feel like we're taking the best possible angle of this tree, which is not the best to be completely honest. So let's see what we can do out of it. No worries. That's about it. So pretty quick video today. 
Sorry if it's not as long as you guys wanted. And I know the end result to some people is not great. But to me this is good progress. Really good progress. At least, you know, something's, something's happening with it, you know. I could probably pull some of these little branches off in between the canopy layers, but for now, you know, we got rid of so much canopy. I think we just leave it how it is. Let it recover. And that's it. Alright, no worries. Cheers for watching you guys, and hopefully in another year this tree starts to look like something special. Give it a bit of a spin now. I'll stand to the side. Cheers for watching Aussie Fonzo bloke. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to everybody. Hope everyone's safe. Had a great time with the family and friends. Whether you like your family or not. You do you have to spend Christmas with them. Cheers guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Gave you a bit, maybe gave you a bit of a different perspective on uh, how to style a tree or how to change one that you have styled. Who knows? But for me I'm trying to change things up a little bit. No worries. Cheers for watching Ozzy Bonsai upload. Please like, share, subscribe. And at the end of the day, just I just thank you guys for your comments mainly. Just keep commenting. I've been a bit slack lately, but I'll get back to it. Cheers. And, you know, hopefully this tree will become something one day. Cheers.